Now on to the dinosaur of the day, Mutaburosaurus. Mutaburosaurus lived in northeastern Australia in the early Cretaceous, and its name means Mutabura lizard. It's named after Mutabura, the site in Queensland, Australia, where it was found, and it was described in 1963 from a partial skeleton that included the skull, lower jaws, parts of the pelvis, part of the front and hind limbs. The bones were actually collected by Alan Bartholomew and Edward Dames, and the species was named in 1981 by Bartholomew and Ralph Molnar in honor of Doug Langdon. The type species is Mutaburosaurus langdoni. Its name means Mutabura lizard. And the skeleton found in Mutabura was about 60% complete. Most likely, its carcass floated out to sea from nearby land and then sank and fossilized. Doug Langdon said he found the bones in a dry creek bed, and he, he actually wrote past them. And he said, quote, I was mustering cattle, and it was a dry season, so there wasn't much grass around, and I happened to ride down to this water hole to have a look for any cattle, and there's none there, so I rode on and I rode right past the bones. So again, the first fossils were found on his property in 1963, but it took some time to collect the bones, and his sheep and cattle accidentally wore some of the bones down. Also, some of the bones on his property were taken by locals as souvenirs, though many returned them when local authorities set up an amnesty for missing pieces. Mutaburosaurus teeth have been found at other sites, one of them Lightning Ridge, they're actually opalized teeth, and other skulls have also since been found. In the two Mutaburosaurus skulls, they have slightly different crests. One, known as the Dunluce skull, and was the second skull to be found, has a shorter nasal crest, and it's slightly older than the first skull found, so that may mean that the crest just changed over time. Skulls may also be different for males and females, or maybe potentially it's even a different species. There's possibly two to three species of Mutaburosaurus, but only one so far has been formally described. These fossils were found in rocks that formed a marine environment, which means that shallow seas covered a lot of eastern Australia during its time. Mutaburosaurus may have been a good swimmer. This is based on trackways in the Australia's Dinosaur Stampede National Monument. 3,000 footprints were thought to be from dinosaurs stampeding to get away from a predator, which had large three-toed footprints, but now paleontologist Anthony Romilio said those prints were of a wading Mutaburosaurus-like herbivore, and the other prints were from dinosaurs swimming in a prehistoric river. Mutaburosaurus was 26 feet or 8 meters long and weighed 3.1 short tons, 2.8 metric tons. There's debate whether or not it was quadrupedal, but now most think it was bipedal. Originally, scientists thought that it had a thumb spike, but the foot was long and broad with four toes, so it probably didn't. It had weight-bearing hooves. It could probably run away from its predators, and even though many think it was bipedal, it may have also spent a lot of time on all fours. It looked kind of like an iguanodon with a long, stiff tail, and it had short forelimbs and a flat, wide skull. Also, the skull had a hollow chamber, an enlarged nasal cavity, in a pointed snout, this was possibly used for display or to make distinctive calls, but no fossilized nasal tissue has been found, so it's unclear what it was for. It also had powerful jaws and teeth that could shear, but the way the teeth were arranged meant it couldn't actually chew. Some scientists used to think it ate meat, but now they just think it was shearing teeth. In 1981, Molnar thought that Mutaburosaurus was an omnivore, but then in 1995 changed his opinion to herbivore, again with the shearing teeth. Mutaborosaurus did have strong jaw muscles in the rear part of the skull, where the muscles are attached. It's actually deeper compared to other ornithopods. Instead of continually replacing teeth, Mutaborosaurus probably replaced all of its teeth at once. It had a tooth row that formed a shearing surface instead of a grinding one, again, shearing. It also had a beak, so it probably could eat some tough vegetation, like cycads. Again, it was an ornithopod, or duck-billed dinosaur, but its teeth were more like triceratops. Originally, Mutaburosaurus was classified as Iguanodon today, then later as Camptosauridae, Drysauridae, or Hypsilophodontidae. Now it's considered to be part of Rhabdodontidae. Molnar assigned it to Iguanodon today, but then in 2010, Andrew McDonald released a study that placed it in Rhabdodontidae. It lived in conifer forests near the edge of the inland Aramanga Sea, and in Lightning Ridge, there would have been extra long days in the summer and extra short days in the winter. Mutaborosaurus may have seen sauropods, such as Diamantinosaurus and Ostrosaurus, also the ornithopod Atlas Copcosaurus and Pterosaurs, like Ossidrigo. Mutaborosaurus is one of the most complete dinosaur skeletons in Australia, 
after Mean Me and Ankylosaur, and it was the first to be cast and mounted for display. There's actually fewer than 20 recognized species of dinosaurs in Australia so far. You can see Matsuburosaurus's skeleton slash cast at the Queensland Museum, Finders Discovery Center, and National Dinosaur Museum. All of these are in Australia. The company Kellogg sponsored the cleaning up and putting on display of Mutaburosaurus in the museum, and Mutaburosaurus will be one of the ten dinosaurs in QUT's The Cube, which we've talked about in a few episodes of this podcast, and that'll be on display in December of this year. You can see Mutt, the nickname for Mutaburosaurus, a full-size fiberglass statue near Main Street on Uhenden. There's also a Mutaburosaurus playground called Mimi, where kids can climb through its belly and slide down her tail, and Mimi is also in a children's book. Mutaburosaurus appeared in a local community calendar that was meant to raise money for a school and an ambulance defibrillator. People posed naked with props, and one elderly couple posed naked with a life-size Mutaburosaurus replica. Uh, you can also see Mutaburosaurus in an episode of Walking with Dinosaurs, and the dinosaur appears in Land Before Time 3 as a character named Mutt and his father, as well as in the Land Before Time TV show. Mutaburosaurus is also in the 1995 film Mutaburosaurus Life in Gondwana, which is a short 30-minute film about a young Mutaburosaurus that becomes separated from its mother. In April of this year, the town Mutabura honored Doug Langdon, who passed away last November at age 82 from cancer, with a special horse race, the Doug Langdon Memorial Race, and the race committee and jockeys paid him tribute by wearing black armbands. Mutaburosaurus may become one of Australia's state fossils in Queensland. So far, only two of Australia's states have fossils, New South Wales, this was officiated by the Geological Survey of New South Wales, and Western Australia, and theirs was picked based on public submissions. The idea of having state fossils came from the U.S. The first states with fossil emblems were Louisiana, their fossil is petrified palm wood, then Maine, which has prehistoric plant, Perdica quadrifaria, and Georgia, which has a shark tooth, back in 1976, and this was because it was all good for tourism. Australia's first state fossil was announced in 1995. Western Australia has a fish fossil. This was selected by a democratic process. Actually, teachers from a primary school in Perth heard about the U.S. state fossils and lobbied their state government to have a state fossil as an exercise for their students. The government made a public call for the fossils to consider, and the fish won based on a petition signed by nearly 1,000 people and supporting letters from international paleontologists. But going back to Mutaburosaurus, in 2013, the Queensland Museum published a children's book, Happy Birthday, Mutaburosaurus, to celebrate 50 years since the first bones from the dinosaur were discovered. So back to Mutaburosaurus's family, Rhabdodontids. They were herbivores and ornithopods that lived in the Cretaceous, and they had deep skulls and jaws. Fossils have been found in Europe and Australia. This family didn't appear until 2002 when David Wischempel and colleagues proposed the family. And depending on who you ask, Mutaburosaurus is part of this family. The original definition would not have included Mutaburosaurus, but Paul Serrano's definition that it's the most inclusive clad, which contains Rhabdodon, Priscus, but not Parasaurolophus walkeri, would include Mutaburosaurus. <laughs> 